Now, children come into this world with abundant curiosity and abundant interest in figuring out how it all works. And what they need to develop that further is the opportunity to interact, to explore, to play. A place like this gives them that opportunity better than almost anything else, and we should recognize the value of these informal learning spaces, these open and interactive places for children to freely explore. The first time that I brought one of my kids here, and it was really neat to, to see him experience the zoo and to, to bring him to a place that I went to as a kid. It's one of the, the first things that I, I remember doing with him that, that I did as a child that I did with my parents. So we are now on the, the third generation coming to the JMZ, and it's been a wonderful part of our lives. Our mission is to engage a child's curiosity in science and nature, and, and we chose that mission carefully because it's about a child, it's, it's personal. Um, it, they come with their own curiosity, and then we leverage that curiosity um, with science, which is a process of understanding, and nature, which is the phenomena, all of the stuff in the world that we're exposed to. I think children have a, an excellent sense a sixth sense, if you will, about being able to, to freely explore. And, and this place says all over it, this is, this is for you kids. This is a place where you can exercise your imagination to its utmost. We offer a big variety of programs that are suitable for elementary school and preschool age children. And they range from field trips to the open space reserves, summer camps all summer long, like nine of them, that everything from physics to biology, zookeeping, <laughs> classes for moms and kids uh, for preschoolers, uh, after school programs in the schools, and then our outreach programs to the schools are our most robust program. We've done a lot of um, renovations over the years, certainly not to the buildings, besides um, ca putting buckets underneath when we have some rainfall because the roof is in terrible shape. We don't have enough storage space, <laughs> but we also pack a lot of artifacts, um, scientific equipment, the storage of all of the stuff that we take out to the schools takes a lot of storage. We're certain, definitely looking forward to having a more efficient space, um, that's better laid out, but also just having a healthier space. We've done a lot of stuff outside here within the zoo in terms of the pathways and trying to get it um, safe and clean and um, and now it's time, you know, it's time to take the the main um, building down and make it be sustainable for a long time. It's really time. So what we are trying to do is right-size the building to meet the needs of our existing audience. We recognize that they may come more frequently and so we need to be prepared for that and already we're overcrowded at times and, and we're not prepared for it today. We need to offer more programs, we need to be able to store more things. Um, all of these needs mean that the footprint is probably going to be about twice the size as the footprint is today, but we'll have three times the amount of space because we're going to fold things over the top of themselves. This institution has already proved that it's a legacy in this community and by joining this campaign, you have an opportunity to be part of that legacy. It's going to be here for a long time, generation after generation after generation. Children are going to use it. There's a lot of value in that investment. This project is worth investing because it is a model of how museums and schools can leverage their resources to, to better science education. And what better place than Palo Alto to solve that problem? Um, the center of technology, a, a community that values children and values science. If, if we are doing it here, it's time that we talk about it and it's time that we show the world how we do it.